I'll explain to you how Ridley works, and this is really amazing. We'll shoot anywhere from four to 14 cameras. And so there'll be a big monitor in a tent for him. He's with his DP, and there'll be a massive monitor that's probably, I don't know, 60 inches or something. And then underneath it, there'll be a bunch of tiny monitors in the lower rung. And they're all labeled with the names of our camera operators. And the tent is microphone so that our video assist person can understand what Ridley wants to see on the big monitor. So while we're filming one of these big sequences, he's yelling out the names of the camera operators as we're filming and live, and we're live cutting to a big monitor. And wow. Ridley knows this and knows how to do it because he he made live TV for the BBC. You're actually watching a live cut of the movie in real time. It's another level of genius to watch him create like that. How are you guys doing? You're We're great. Doing very good. My name's Daniel. Nice. My name's Shabazz. Shabazz, nice to meet you. I love the poster behind you guys. Oh, oh this we, uh, you know, we really went all out to make sure that this was a uh, yeah. great interview for you. So. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Where, where are you guys? We're in Toronto right now. We are literally downtown Toronto watching. Awesome. Uh, we had a screening this morning, but we really wanted to talk to you about Napoleon. So we're just happy right. to be here with you. I'm happy to be with you guys. I love Toronto. I've had some good times up there. We filmed there and been to the festival. It's a great place. Hopefully next time you're here, we'll get to meet you and uh, we'll talk in person. I'm in. I'm in. You know, Napoleon's one of those films that we don't get to see made. Uh, as much anymore. And we're blown away by the scale of it. How did you even begin to tell a story like this practically? It's all Ridley, man. I mean, like, um, I, I'm just one of the tools in his his toolbox, but like, I think you could, there are probably, you know, two or three filmmakers that could pull this kind of movie off. And um, I think people overuse the word, but I think Ridley really is a genius. You know, he, we've made 12 movies together. We, we produced eight and then um, we produced it four that he, he directed and produced as well. So I've been able to watch him for a long time. And when I sat down with him, my first meetings I, I had with him in 2016, I asked him, you know, what do you, what's the movie you want to make that you have it? And this was one of them. And so, you know, he treats the approach of movies like this, like a general. I think, uh, you know, once a week, every Monday morning, we sit down with all of our HODs and we go through the script line by line, page by page. And we just talk about the issues and the preparation. So, he um, he prepares and prepares and over prepares and hand draws every frame so that we know exactly what he wants and how many cameras we're going to have. And so it's it's a, just a tribute to the, to him as an artist, kind of the movie and, and what he's able to pull off, truly. He is, I think, one of the, the last few directors that you know one of his films just by like looking at a frame of it, right? Like you could see like... Yeah. This is a Ridley Scott film, 100%. Yeah, they're they're all like every frame is a painting, you know? And it, yeah. it if you could see his painting, he actually has a, a big collection of artwork, the, his paintings and his drawings. He has photographs. I have two here in my office that he gave me. I mean, it just everything is about this visual aesthetic that that he is uh, approving. And, and that's, it's pretty inspiring to watch. We don't really see much of Napoleon in, in, in films out there. So I'm curious, why did you go for an appointment and what kind of made you excited about that? So the first time we wanted to tell a story about like a very powerful, robust military leader who was kind of vulnerable inside to this relationship with his wife. So you have this guy who's feared globally. He has so much power, you know, and people that are terrified of him, but he he's ruled by this woman and his heart, like he, he can't master this relationship. And so I think for us, and certainly for Ridley, he was like, he wanted to approach it in a way that we've never really approached a big war movie with, you know, men with big egos and swashbuckling leaders where he goes home at night and he can't quite figure out, you know, how to command this relationship. And I think you see that wonderful scene on the couch after that, you know, he catches her having an affair, you know, where... He makes her apologize, but in the end, she just kind of flips on him and says, like, you know, you're nothing without me. And he really, he weeps, you know, you know. And so I think that to us had a, a new way into the movie. And Ridley, my, my kudos to him, because from minute one of the movie and the planning of it, when he, we sat with David Scarpa, he told him, I want to see this through that prism of that relationship. Absolutely. I think one of the things that we always think about is in, in modern media almost, Napoleon has become this running joke of, oh, you have Napoleon complex. You know, he's just a short guy, he doesn't do anything. This movie really solidifies just that brutality of that character. And I think Joaquin does such a phenomenal job of it. So kudos to you guys and the entire team for really showing us 
No, he was a brutal guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think that's also, it's a good point, I think, to show that brutality and that, you know, that that level of, um, he's maniacal in, in kind of his planning and, and his appetite for conquering. And so I think, you know, we, we, I almost feel like we snuck one by the system in a way where we have this great <laughs> battle movie, but we have this wonderfully demented like love story and you never see those things together. And that's why I think the movie is special. I love that you mentioned like that, like you get those two like lanes of this film, right? Like there is the, the deranged love story, but there's also like these battles and it really feels like I went to a time machine and I'm like, how did you guys pull this off? I I'm curious what, during the production of all of this, was there any battle or was there any moment that you were just like, this feels like I went into a time machine and I am somewhere yeah. else in the world right now? This is the biggest movie I've ever made. You know, I've made movies like Masters by the Sea for eight million bucks and, um, you know, movies like The Way Way Back for four and like, you know, and then made, you know, movies like Last Duel and this with Ridley. And so I absolutely felt like, you know, I, I was in a time machine when I went to go make like the Battle of Waterloo. And I have these wonderful videos. I won't show it on the screen because you're recording, but I have these videos of of the day and what that was like, you know, behind the scenes with big mortars of dirt, you know, exploding and horses and you know the the um, armies doing the formation of squares, you know. And then we have the technical side of it, which are huge trucks with fucking you know ro uh, cranes and robo arms off the side of them with cameras and guys in the back of ATVs and you know uh, drone cameras and just like there's there's 14 cameras and then there's Ridley in a tent and I'm kind of standing alongside watching it and I have to pick myself it's like I won the lottery I, I'm it could be my last movie and I'd be thrilled like that <laughs> it could be it it's like it's to make a movie with Ridley and Joaquin Phoenix about Napoleon so I know exactly what you're saying is I, I am such a fan of cinema and movies when I'm there watching this, I'm like, this is historic in a way, what we're pulling off. And so uh, totally, I felt it at Austerlitz. I felt it at Waterloo. I really felt it in a, in a much lesser scale, but what I think is one of the best sequences in the movie um, in the coup when, you know, they're, they're running out and Joaquin stumbles down the stairs, which was total accident, but it works. And you know, Ridley did it in one take. And I think seeing all that stuff and being there every day for me is like a drug. It's just, it's, there's nothing like it. I can't, I can't encapsulate it into words truly. It's, I love being there, seeing that stuff. So yes, it felt, it feels like a dream and it feels like a big achievement um, to pull off. So I'm glad you guys appreciate it. Like, it feels like old school Hollywood filmmaking where you have, you know, you, you yeah. just mentioned Ridley and intent. Like that's what you kind of see back in that time period. Yeah. Just really being on set, being on location for it. I'll explain to you how Ridley works. And this is really amazing. So, you know, we'll shoot anywhere from four to, you know, 14 cameras. And so there'll be a big monitor and a tent for him. He's with his DP and his DIT. And there'll be a massive monitor that's probably, I don't know, 60 inches or something. It's a TV, a flat screen. And then underneath it, there'll be a bunch of tiny monitors in the lower rung. And they're all labeled with the names of our camera operators. And the tent and his microphone so that our video assist person can understand what Ridley wants to see on the big monitor. So while we're filming one of these big sequences, Ridley's on a walkie-talkie and the tent is mic'd. And so he's yelling out the names of the camera operators as we're filming and live, and we're live cutting to a big monitor. And wow. Ridley knows this and knows how to do it because he he made live TV for the BBC, yeah. you know, 40 years ago, 30, about 45 years ago. And so you're actually watching a live cut of the movie in real time. Wow. And so when I, when people come and watch it, they, they, there's very people that do this. I think like virtually none of them do it with live cutting. And so you see his process and with the preparation of the storyboards, he knows exactly what he wants each camera to, to, to capture. And so I, I really think it's, it, it's, it's another level of genius to watch him create like that. And so I just sit back and, you know, try to address any problems. <laughs> <laughs> They're normally or none. Wow. No, that, that makes absolute sense. And I mean, you look at a movie that has such a rich history, you know, Napoleon's story is so deep and just so many areas that you can kind of explore. How how important was historical accuracy to you guys in terms of taking the story forward? It's always important for a base, you know, and I'm, I don't know if you guys read the New, York, the New Yorker piece yesterday, but like, 
it, it's always important for a base, but at the end, this is Ridley's interpretation of Napoleon's life. Because if we took just a plain biography, it may not make the best movie. So there's always creative license to take, you know, there are a few things that that we exaggerate to make it more enjoyable for the viewer. Um, so we arm ourselves with historians and you know war historians and you know war you know battle recreators and all those things. But at the end of the day, we have to make a great movie. And so mm. this is Ridley's interpretation of Napoleon's life. That's incredible. Yeah, and and I'm curious, you know, uh, a film that we always go back to uh, that we loved here on the movie podcast was The Last Duel, which we think yeah. was. An incredibly underrated and not talked enough about films. So, first of all, thank you, oh, thank you for that. Love that because we absolutely adore it. Uh, what did creating that film help you in preparing to take on a movie like Napoleon? I'm happy to hear what you said about that movie. I, you know, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck and Nicole Hall of Center wrote a beautiful movie and and a really thoughtful and intelligent movie, an intellectual movie. You know, again masqueraded around this battle and, and there's a great piece the book that was written you know the last two it was based on is such a great read and so um there's a lot of overlap you know logistically of what we did you know that movie was a lot more contained um you know with the some of the battle sequences we were able to kind of cheat them and we we built that duel uh that that kind of um you know courtyard for the final duel and that was more contained but there's a lot of the same components, of course, with you know the horses and the battle sequences and some of the camera work. And we have such a world class team with our our DP and our designer. And so, you know, Ridley's worked with these guys for decades. I've worked with them for you know a long time, but not decades. And so, the shorthand for Ridley to have with that movie, it, it's the same language. You know, there's, it's kind of the same language from Duel to this. Um, totally different movies, of course, and tonally they're wildly different. There was a lot to borrow from the movie, at least logistically. We shot Last Duel in France and Ireland. We ended up making uh, Napoleon in, in um, England and Malta. Uh, but it's a lot of the same players, you know, and and um, the stories are markedly different, as you know, but a lot of the same players helping us execute Ridley's vision. Phenomenal, yeah. And, and, and I think you see that. And, like, and as we said, like, you could tell what is a Ridley Scott film. And that yeah. is, that, that bloodline is, is continues... In Napoleon. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I um I'm his as producing partner, you know, and I'm not anymore, but we're, we're actually producing one more film together that he's not directing. So we, we produced 12 movies, as I said. To see someone be able to make Thelma and Louise, Gladiator, The Martian, The Last Duel, Napoleon, Black Hawk Down, it's such a, a remarkable tapestry of work. And I I would, you know, challenge anyone. I mean, Spielberg's obviously had a wonderful run of different movies, but like, I've never seen someone explore more genres successfully than Ridley Scott. And I think that's something that has to be noted as we talk about this retrospective of his life and how much work he's done. You know, it just, it, it's staggering to think someone could do that many movies that well, you know, and, um, and have them be so varied and different. Absolutely. Devin, we're, we're so grateful for your time today. We're so thankful thank you guys. for this movie. And we absolutely loved it. So thank you so much. We hope we can talk to you soon. Yeah, I love talking to you guys. I really appreciate it. I love your enthusiasm. I can tell you like the movie. And that makes me so happy, truly. I mean, this is uh, these are big, big labors of love. And so when people respond to them, it, it it's the best. Oh, yeah. And like we have such a fantastic cast in this movie, too. Oh, my God. Oh, no. We didn't even get to talk about those guys. I mean, like, I know. I, it, it's everybody like you know joaquin is like a, he is uh he's such a, a great hard-working challenging like turns every page over in the script to make sure we're getting the best thing it, he's just he's so good vanessa's wonderful i mean it, it oh, keeps yeah. going, going absolutely yeah thank yeah. you again so much Kevin. hope to talk to you soon thank you guys spread the word i appreciate it